They say that knowledge is power. And with the rigid SeekTech SR20 cable pipe and sonde locator, you'll know more about the signal than with any other receiver. When tracing buried utility lines, the SR20's signal readings show you the location, direction, and depth of locating signals, so you can acquire them quickly and easily trace their path. When locating duct probes and remote transmitters like the ones found in SeaSnake camera systems, the SR20's on-screen map helps you quickly and precisely pinpoint the transmitter's position and depth. Part 1 of this video will show you the basics of setting up and operating the SR20's features and show you how you can use those features to trace buried conductors. Part 2 of this video teaches you how to locate remote transmitters. The SR20 operates on four C-size batteries. To install the batteries, locate the battery compartment on the bottom of the receiver and turn the locking knob a quarter turn to release it. Install the batteries with the correct polarity as shown on the label inside the battery holder. You can use either alkaline or rechargeable batteries, but to prevent damage to the receiver, never mix rechargeable and standard battery types. When you've loaded the batteries, slide the holder back into the receiver and turn the locking knob a quarter turn to secure it. The batteries are installed, so let's power up the receiver and take a look at its interface and controls. The power key is located at the bottom right of the keypad. We'll press it, and after a few seconds the operating screen will appear, which means the receiver is ready for use. Let's start with a look at the display. The display has two main regions, the area outside the circle and the area inside the circle. The area inside the circle is called the active view area, and it's used to display the graphical locating elements and operating menus. Outside the active view area, we'll find indicator icons and numeric readouts. Some of these items will change depending on whether you're tracing a line or locating a sonde, so we'll cover most of these items in later segments. For now, let's look at just two of them. In the upper right portion of the display, you'll find the battery indicator. The icon will be completely filled in when the batteries are new and will gradually empty as the batteries become discharged. On the left side of the display, you'll find the operating mode and frequency indicators. The number tells us the receiver is set to 33 kilohertz and the icon tells us that this is an active line tracing frequency for use with a transmitter. You can select a different operating mode or frequency by pressing the frequency key. You can use the key in two ways. A short press cycles you through the frequencies one at a time. A long press opens a list and you can use the up or down keys to scroll directly to the frequency you want. When the selection you want is highlighted, press the select key in the center of the keypad to choose the frequency and close the list. You can customize the frequency list by adding or removing frequencies. You'll do that in the main menu, which you can open by pressing the menu key. The main menu contains a list of frequencies. Each one has a box next to it. If the box is checked, the frequency is enabled, which means it will appear on the list that pops open when you press the frequency key. If the box is unchecked, the frequency is disabled and will not appear in the list. To enable or disable a frequency, use the up or down keys to highlight it, and then press the select key to check or uncheck its box. If the frequency you need isn't listed here in the main menu, you can easily add it, and your operator's manual contains instructions on how to do that. If we scroll down past the list of frequencies, we'll find some tool settings. The first item lets us switch the depth measurement between feet and meters. Just press the select key to switch back and forth. The next item controls how the LCD's backlight works. It's on automatic right now, which works well most of the time. You can also turn it on all the time or off all the time to save your batteries. Right below the backlight setting is the auto shutdown control. This feature turns the receiver off automatically if no keys are pressed for one hour. Press the select key to enable or disable this feature. The next item down lets us change the display's contrast. Press the select key to open the control, and then use the frequency and power keys to adjust the screen's contrast. 
When you're done, press the Select key to close the control. The final three items let you add or remove display features, add or remove frequencies from the main menu, and program in custom frequencies for use with other manufacturers' equipment, and reset the receiver to its factory default settings. Refer to your operator's manual for details on these menu items and how to use them. To exit the main menu, press the Menu key. There's one more key we want to look at here, and that's the Volume Control key. The Volume Control key lets you adjust the sound level coming out of the speaker. Press the key to open the sound menu, and then use the up or down keys to change the sound level. The menu will close on its own after a few seconds, or you can press the Select key to close it immediately.